In previous videos, we talked about different legends of a Song of Ice and Fire universe, from dragons coming from space, to kings fighting against entities in the sea. However, the story we will talk about today is the story of a king who fought against entities that almost wiped out his people. Hugor of the Hill, an Andal who destroyed the mythical Swan Maidens. And if you would like to know more about the universe of A Song of Ice and Fire, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Welcome to the Three-Eyed Raven. To understand this legend, we must go to the book of the world of ice and fire, where we can read part of this myth that happened thousands of years before Game of Thrones, or the House of the Dragon. The quote from the book reads as follows. According to an ancient legend that is told in Pentos, the Andals killed the Swan Maidens, who lured and killed travelers in the Velvet Hills, east of the Free City. At that time, a hero called Huko by the Pentoshi Bards, led the Andals, and it is said that he did not kill the Seven Maidens for their crimes, but as a sacrifice to the gods. As is often the case in George Martin's books, too much is found in a small fragment. First let's talk about the Swan Maidens. According to the books, they were mythological entities that lived in the Velvet Hills. This is a hill in Essos, and the story goes that they lured travelers and killed them. This is like a version of mermaids, but in some hills and in the form of swans. We don't know much about these creatures in the universe of A Song of Ice and Fire, but we can understand more about them by looking at our own mythologies, for the Swan Maidens come from ancient legends of mankind. The figure of the Swan Maiden has been the object of fascination and mystery in cultures around the world. These creatures which combine human beauty and grace with the majesty of the swan have been the subject of countless legends and tales. The story of the swan maidens may have its roots in ancient India. The legend of Urvashi and Pururavas tells of an apsaras or celestial nymph who descends to earth and falls in love with a mortal king. Although this story does not directly involve the transformation into a swan, the idea of celestial beings taking human form to interact with mortals is a recurring theme. In Europe, Greek mythology offers us the myth of Leda and the swan. Zeus, in the form of a swan, seduced Leda, who subsequently gave birth to two sets of twins, Castor and Pollux, and Helen and Clytemnestra. Although in this case it is Zeus who takes the form of a swan, the relationship between humanity and these majestic birds is clearly established. The recurring plot in many of these stories is the theft of the Swan Maiden's feathered mantle. Without this magical object, the Maiden cannot transform and return to her celestial world, remaining trapped in human form. This act of theft symbolizes the capture and taming of the wild, as well as the tension between the divine and the earthly. I think I understand the significance of the Swan Maiden's story, based on these legends. The Andals were one of the first civilizations that we know of that began to use iron to create weapons and shields, and this gave them an incredible military advantage. It is mentioned that it was this civilization that brought the religion of the Seven to Westeros. If the legend of the Swan Maiden is an analogy of how humans managed to tame the divine and evolve into something more, then we could say that the story of the Swan Maiden really reflects the evolution of the Andals from savages to a structured civilization. However, if the explanation is literal, and these creatures really exist, the story could be somewhat different. It could be that in this area there were these creatures that seduced humans to eat them. In this universe, there are ice spiders, dragons, and even giant monkeys so it would not be so far-fetched that there are half-human swans that are dangerous to humans. The strange thing about the story is that it mentions that this man sacrificed the maidens, not for their sins, but as an offering to the gods. When we talk about human or animal sacrifices in the universe of Song of Ice and Fire, we usually think of the Black Goat, or human sacrifices to the Lord of Light, something that the leaders of the Faith of the Seven considered demonic. 
It is somewhat interesting to know that in the origin of the religion of the Seven, one that they consider so developed and civil, they also made sacrifices of creatures. Another interesting element of this story is the protagonist of the death of the Swan Maidens. It is mentioned that this man's name was Huko, but it could actually be Huger. In the same book there is a king named Huger of the Hill. According to the mythology of Westeros, Huger of the Hill was a king who is said to have been father himself, one of the chief deities of the Faith of the Seven, who crowned Huger king. Not only that, but his wife had a divine lineage, being the daughter of another celestial entity. Furthermore, legends tell that his weapons were not forged by mortal hands, but created by another god. All this makes Huger's story not only fascinating, but also fundamental to understanding the birth and essence of the faith of the Seven. Now, a lingering mystery is whether these divine entities actually walk the earth, or whether they are merely figments of the collective imagination. If they really existed, we could be in for a revelation. These deities may have played a role in the hidden conflicts that unfold in the shadows of Game of Thrones. One of the reasons why many believe in the authenticity of Huger's story is that curiously, similar accounts of him are scattered in different regions, albeit with slight variations in his name. This could indicate that there were actual witnesses to his exploits, and that his legacy was passed down from generation to generation. However, there are other myths that still remain mysterious, such as that of the Swan Maidens. It is not clear if they represented a real danger, or if they are a metaphor for the evolution of the Andals in religion. What we do know is that it is one of those legends of Westeros that enrich this world, and it would be interesting to see them on the screen. Perhaps a movie where we show the origin of the history of the Seven, and what really happened. But tell me what you think. Are the legends of the Swan Maidens real? And for more videos of your favorite series and movies, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Before I wrap up this video, I want to let you know that the videos on this channel are based on both the Game of Thrones and the House of the Dragon series, as well as the books by George Martin. If you want to learn more about this universe, I'm going to leave you our affiliate link in the description, where you can order the books or their audible version. And if you like the official t-shirts of this channel, you will also find the link to our store to order your favorite piece. Thank you for your support. And if you like this content, I invite you to become a member of this channel. Each contributor will see their name at the end of all videos. And for more videos with theories, news, and stories from the Game of Thrones universe, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. You are on The Three-Eyed Raven.